but just in the last few days, we've seen Paris, um, and there's huge outrage about that, as there ought to be. Um, there's also Beirut and Baghdad and numerous places across Syria. Um, and that sort of outrage, I think, is well deserved by all those places. There will be a security response and there ought to be a security response. The question is, is how comprehensive are we going to be about this? Okay, are we simply going to go in bl guns blazing and then leave it at that? that? That may not actually deliver us to the desired destination. We want this to end, we want this to stop. And if we can't make it end or stop, we want to at least minimize it to the smallest possible point that it can be. For example, if you're talking about Syria, all right, one of the key things, in fact, I would argue one the most key thing that's happening in Syria right now is that you have a very brutal regime terrorizing its own people. And that will create a huge recruitment pool from among Syrians, okay, uh, to go into groups like ISIS um, or Al-Qaeda. All right, so that's one aspect. That's not to say that you then just go after Bashar al-Assad and forget about ISIS. No, but you need to be able to put all of these things into context. We're in a lovely country here in Tunisia, um, and Tunisia is a great success story for many different things, but it's also the place that delivers a huge number of people to ISIS. Why is that happening? And is it because of the last five years? Or does it go much further back and the last five years simply opened what was already you know, a bursting kettle? All right, um, we, we need to understand that. We're not interested in simply blaming here. We want to reduce the problem as, hum as much as humanly possible. And if that means more issues around development being looked at and uh, dealt with so that we don't have so many people that are vulnerable to radical recruitment, then that's what I think people ought to be doing.